So, um, welcome to the first uh, Critical Game Lab of June. Uh, my name is Florian. I'm a student of Game Studies and Engineering in the Master's Program at Klagenfurt University. Um, I'm also a tutor for the Klagenfurt Game Lab and we usually do uh, physical game labs at the university where we um, analyze, discuss and play games together with the students. As we can't do that right now, we've decided to move to Twitch and essentially it will be me playing then and today um, we are going to look at video games in connection to art and I've picked two um, rather simple games um, which are called Hue, which is the one we'll be playing now and afterwards we'll be playing um, Beyond Eyes. Um, the reason I've decided to play these games is because they um, focus on uh, aesthetics or aesthetic exploration and uh, they don't have a lot of uh, difficult mechanics that you would need to master so it's at least from my impression it's more about um, sort of taking in the scenery um, exploring the aesthetics and to me that's to me at least that's that's one way you could look at games as art in a way and um, let's just jump right in I'm actually going to start a new game with Hugh It's really in uh, in terms of graphics this is really simple it's um, just a simple 2d platformer where you explore and right now as you can see there isn't even that much color dearest you oh I've had the most dreadful luck I feel terrible that you've been left alone all this time the traitorous dr. gray tried to steal the annular spectrum a ring I developed to allow perception and alteration of color. Some call them impossible colors. <laughs> impossible for Dr. Gray, maybe. Anyway, something went wrong. I turned a strange shade and became invisible. The ring, it, it fractured, scattering colored shards far and wide. I stayed at home for many weeks, watching, waiting, existing on this colored plane. I couldn't speak to you, nor interact with anything in the mono world. So I left. I left for the university where I hid away the colored tools I had created. I pray you have found what is left of the ring. So yeah, that's that's basically how the game starts. You sort of get a glimpse of someone um, living in the colored world and you can't really access them. And you're essentially in this, for now, in this monochrome world and um, have to try and find her. Okay, so here seems to be the first hint of color, uh, but as I don't really have any mechanics yet, I can't do anything with that. And now I actually got my first color, and as you can see, this also um, colored the world as well. So it went from uh, monochrome to filling some parts of the world with blue since the beginning we have pointed to the sky and declared it blue it is this shared vision this unquestioned understanding which connects us but are you really seeing blue the same way i see it perhaps 
blue is nothing more than a shade of grey to you. Perhaps everyone in this world sees nothing but shades of grey. Don't you see, Hugh? This... this is why we're here. So there actually are a few collectibles, but I think I need more colors to actually get these. So maybe a question for the people. Do you um, have played any games or nor any games that you would consider as artsy or artful? Um, I'm, I'm not sure if she is really um, referring to um, color blindness. I think it's just this sort of notion that um, everyone perceives colors differently in a way and um, in that sense maybe also sees the world differently. It's more like on a, a maybe psychological or philosophical level rather than on a physical one. Oh yes, Ori on a uh, on aesthetic level looks really beautiful. That's true. I sadly haven't played it myself, so I can't really speak for um, the mechanics as well. So this is essentially the the one game mechanic that you have. You can sort of change how the world looks by. Um, changing the the colors on your ring and basically i used um the color blue and put it into the background and made the the rock disappear Oh, Art Academy, is, is that one of those games where you actually draw things? Oh yeah, Gris is, is another interesting example. Will be met. But if you discard those expectations, don't you think instead the cave will be full of surprises? I ask for you, Hugh, to abandon your expectations. To pull me back from the brink of unreality. I need you to see the world not for what it is, but for what it can be. I think Gree is actually um, in in a way similar to this game as um, I believe uh, Gree deals with grief, so in a in a sense of coming to terms with your life and with grief, and I think it also tries to portray that thing through through color. Um, the the more you progress towards a um, positive perception of yourself and the world and the, the more colorful it becomes and also the more agents you essentially have um, tied to those colors.
Yeah, this this is really still a little bit like a tutorial thing. Where you might have to think about which color you need and where the color needs to be. I still remember when I played Gree, I um, I didn't really understand what it was about for whatever reason and I just sort of soaked it in as some sort of aesthetic experience that just um, became more beautiful in a way. But actually in, in the end I actually had to look up uh, what the narrative might be about and that's that sort of just enhanced my experience. But I think I was just, when I first played it I was completely startled. Um, by the beauty of it. And as you can see here, there's, there's obviously also some, some elements that are dangerous and you have to think of ways how to use the color to actually not die. like that. <laughs> I mean, currently it's just one color, which um, means it's not that difficult to get through the game. Why isn't this working? All right, I think I know what I did wrong. Or not? I thought there was a way to just remove and add the color again, but maybe that's uh, once you have more colors. Yeah, I could actually check if that makes a difference. Oh yeah, I no, I still can't add the color again. Yeah, I think that's how it goes. You need to wait. I think one of the difficult discussions with regards to um, whether games are art or not usually stems from the fact that um, games are mass produced so there, there isn't any sort of individuality to them because so many people can buy and appreciate them and that usually moves people away from actually considering games as art and there's also these notions of um, art having to be like super sophisticated so for instance a famous picture or whatever that's kind of what people perceive of as art most of the time at least in academic discussions this is what often happens when you talk about video games when you talk about art in general that there has to be something special about them and something very sophisticated and that, for some reason, doesn't seem to apply for, uh, um, to video games for people.
wonder if I can actually go back or if the way is blocked just to see if I can climb that ladder that I couldn't earlier. So yeah, now, now you actually need two different colors to be able to see the door because the background holds different colors. That wasn't very smart. <laughs> oh, hi there, Simon. Yeah, it, it is a very nice game. I mean, I, I just love the, the concept of playing around with the colors, which is why I initially picked this up. Okay, so I don't even think I can actually get back through the lower door, but I can go somewhere here. Maybe as we already sort of touched upon the topic of um, high art versus low art, what do you think in general, not just for games, what do you think constitutes art? Do you think there need to be a certain feature in order for something that is crafted, I would say, um, considered art? to distinguish. Now, imagine a shade one step further than purple, a color beyond what we can actually perceive. We call these impossible colors. And I fear that this, this is where I currently reside. If reality is rooted in our perception and you cannot perceive me, do I even exist to you? I'm sure that I do. I mean, you're reading this letter, or or at least I hope you are. I'm sorry, but existing in this strange state of impermanence does funny things to you, Hugh. It makes you question what is real. I mean, yeah, this, this game really plays on this notion of what is real and what is not, because depending on the colors, other things are real, whereas some just fade into the background. So it really makes you think about what is there, like, 
outside of my visual spectrum. Like making a box disappear just to walk through it essentially. later section it actually gets really interesting when you have to um, switch between like I don't know three or four different colors maybe even more um, the platforming section usually present you with this really interesting rhythm that you have to go through so basically you have to circle through your analog stick in a particular rhythm to make some blocks disappear and others reappear in order to get through there attempting to always backtrack just to see if there are actually certain elements that I missed before because I didn't have that particular color. The university gardens were bathed in an earthy orange light when I first met Dr. Gray. Summer had come and gone in a cold autumnal crispness that caught me off guard. I sat on the grass surrounded by my books and papers when a cool breeze threatened to blow my notes across the lawn. A page escaped my reach and took flight. A man not much older than myself chased after it, catching it on his third or, or fourth attempt. I remember his gentle smile when he returned it. He started talking and I was surprised that he had read my work in the university journal. He said he was a professor and that he hoped we could work together someday. It's funny, Hugh, how something so small can change so much. Yeah, the character is very bouncy. Okay, here yeah, I think I need more colors than I actually have. Oh no, there's something I can actually go to. Dr. Gray soon became my assigned mentor, and I can't help but feel he somehow had a hand in it. Our fires burnt brightest when we worked together. It felt like we could achieve anything. We discovered more about color than I could ever have imagined. We split light, mapped spectrums, we painted, we laughed. We worked long hours and 
Soon our gold became all-consuming. We were vessels. The work became more important than us, and we knew it. I feel like with games, when you try to think of them as art, um, it really usually boils down to the fact there's, that there's so many things involved. There's, there's the art design, there's the narrative design, there's the, the coding that sits behind there, there's the gen general planning of the game. And I think that usually the, the combination of all these things together sort of brings about an experience that can be artful if it is pulled off well and I think here at least they especially because they only have these simple mechanics um, it's quite interesting because you have the the narrative element with the letters that you follow that sort of guide you through there and it connects with the theme of the color so there there definitely is some some sort of amalgamation going on that makes this aesthetically pleasing Yes, it is. It is very many. It is very many disciplines mixing in there. I think, like like I said earlier, it it often probably really boils down to the fact that this is just a commodity. And that's something you just play in your leisure time rather than something that you actively enjoy. Like in, in, in the sense of, I don't know, going to a museum or whatever, which is sort of one of the traditional ways of enjoying art. But then again, through the, the mixture of the disciplines that you have, um, you can probably tell even more compelling stories than any artwork that is, for instance, a painting might ever do because there's so many layers more to this. Yeah, you, you could almost say games are fast food art, yeah, in a way. I, th I think that might be how a lot of people perceive of it. Does this work? Do you think the way of enjoying art, do you think the traditional way of enjoying art can be compared to what we experience when we play games? Um, I think it's very difficult. I think it really depends on the game. I mean, Given how um, how young of a medium games still are there, there probably is... Um, games might still need a lot more refinement in terms of what they can actually do, like in the sense of um, technology needs to get better, people need to get a better understanding of how to turn games into art. And I think on that level it is... Um, it is definitely different but I think that simply just has to do with the, with the fact that art is um, clustered through so many level than it is with traditional art. But I mean, then again, you also have uh, people like Andy Warhol, who essentially print cans of um, of condensed tomato soup, and people still call it art. So I guess there's, there's probably a lot of ways that you can look at art and it might just depend on who the audience is.
I think the, the notion of fast food probably might just refer to more like um, quickly consuming something, which is something I, I'm not sure if you can really do that with a painting, for instance, if you go to the Louvre. Um, I'm not sure if I would say highest form of art, but I do um, at least think that games do are a very high form of arm art if they are pulled off well on all the levels. Okay, now the puzzles are actually getting more complicated and I have to start thinking about what I need to do. <laughs> oh yes, they're, they're very memor memorable. I think that, at least for me, it's sort of the, the black background or the, the black frames that you have, they sort of almost turn this into a painting of some sorts by framing everything that is within there. through most parts of the game, not everything. Um, there's later a section where you have to go to a lighthouse, that's sort of the, the pin pinnacle of the game I think, or the, the turning point. I haven't played that yet, uh, that far yet. I think I need to do it the other way around.
that's too far. It's, it's really difficult to actually navigate that because I don't know where I actually have to position these boxes. Uh, even, even though you've, you've got some, some bullet time while you're navigating the wheel, you still don't really know um, where you have to put stuff and how quickly you actually need to push the things. I think it makes more sense to actually do it this way around. Everything, yeah, I think you just need to be like super quick. This should work. I hope. to you. Blue under the orange. All oh, right. Um, if, yeah, why didn't I think of that? If, if you alternate the colors, it doesn't matter where which block is. This is much easier than trying to do a weird sequence. Let's see. I mean, technically it doesn't matter where which color sits, just as long as it's two different ones. <laughs> why, why didn't I think of that before? I may, I've tried to make it so much more complicated than it actually is. Oops. 
these these sections really get a little more difficult because now you really have to know um, where you have to move your analog stick and you sort of have to get into the rhythm because the time you have to react is quite limited. interesting which you can essentially do with two buttons and still make it a very compelling game and com compelling mechanics um no i don't think we're gonna get that far because i want to switch the game as well Um, in in terms of turning point, this this is kind of like um, in a way it's almost like um, a metaphor for Plato's cave. Like you go into the cave and you come out as enlightened, like in in the sense of now you have all the colors and now you can see everything, and then you actually learn about I believe you learn about your mother or something and her whereabouts, which is the person that keeps communicating through you uh, to you with the with the letters. So it is very interesting because for now you're just, you know, gaining colors and gaining an understanding of the world and just following someone talking to you. Oh yeah, Wonder Song. Yeah, I remember that. I haven't played it, but I've seen it, and it looked really funny.
It's funny. I don't remember much after that day on the grass. I do know that Dr. Mary and I have spent many a time together. I would compliment him on his work and his cheeks would flush with a pinkness. <laughs> He'd notice and change the subject, embarrassed. This work we were doing together, it, it didn't feel much like work anymore. Okay, I think we might as well wrap up the game here. I think this this is about as difficult as it gets in terms of the puzzles. I can't remember seeing any puzzles where you end up using like five or six colors, so we might have just gotten a good grasp of the game. Um, what, what do you think of the game? Do you think that this is um, something you would consider as art maybe on the level of game design on the level of the the art that's in there maybe the overall experience
I feel like it, it comes across as uh, really simple, especially when you're used to, I don't know, AAA games that just have super good graphics that have a lot of content and things like that. And then you have something like this that is probably hand-drawn and um, some people might consider this to be lacking, but I think that um, the, the composition of the whole game as an art piece really works out well with the music, with uh, the the mechanics that, at least for me, um, when when playing it, I realized it was like it puts you in this sort of rhythm of switching between the colors, and that maybe in a way that also makes you kind of a part of the art piece because you're actively participating in painting something on the screen. Yeah, it, it really does give a lot of meaning to the colors. That is true in, in, in the sense of things being there in a, in, a, in a tangible sense, in a sense of being perceived. And also in a way of that you must interact with the colors in order to get anything. <laughs> yes, yes, that's that's also very true that that triple A games are often um, copy paste games in a way. I mean, when when you look at I don't know games like FIFA or also the the newer Assassin's Creed games, like in a sense you have a lot of content in there and a lot of knowledge, a lot of proficiency, skills, whatever flowing into that game, but then again there isn't much of uh, individuality in these games because most of them at the end of the day all do the same things for instance if you, if you look at uh, I don't know bigger open world titles it's usually just all of the games as beautiful as they are in the world the narratives they present it's often just you walking from one question mark to another and it just doesn't add up much to the overall experience to me Oh, a, a battle royale mode for this game, that would be beautiful. Kind, kind of like a 2D Splatoon or something like that. Or, may, or maybe even something like you do in Overcooked where you actually have to cooperate. That would be an interesting take on the color mechanics. Yeah, I, I guess that's true, that, that personality sort of gets drowned in the masses of people, which which is, which is kind of sad. I mean, there must be a lot of good artists in there, and then it just ends up being something that just gets repeated all over the years and milked for the money. And it, it sort of um, but puts a weird take on, on the effort that actually goes into these games. Okay, I'm going to switch the game then. Um, we are going to play Beyond Eyes now, which um, is actually from... <sighs> is there a difference between games as a piece of art and a game in terms of experience? Um, I guess I think it depends on what kind of experience you would look at. I think that if you're looking at games in connection to art, you obviously have the the um, the artistic experience in there. Um, then again, if if you look at a game as a piece of art, it could also be something like um, a collector's edition that you put on your shelf. I guess that could also constitute art on some certain level. Like for instance, if it has art books in there or collectible. Um, I think the, the two terms can overlap, but I think that it really depends on what you're actually looking for. Um, the game they're going to play now is um, Beyond Eyes, which is a um, very artsy game. It's actually by um, Team 17. If you know that, they are actually fairly famous for creating all the Worms games. 
So it kind of struck me as odd that all of a sudden they put out a game like this. Yeah, and I actually looked at the, the Wikipedia article on Team 17 and the the amount of Worms games they put out. It's just crazy. There's, there's so many different iterations of Worms and that that's um, probably like 30 to 40 percent of what Team 70 has so far developed. So, um, it's, it's been a while since I actually played this game, I think what, what happens was the, the girl was hit by fireworks and now she's blind. And um, what this game tries to do is sort of um, turn the, the blindness into some, some kind of mechanics. And um, in a way I think it's, it's kind of similar to Hue in the sense that um, I mean, now it's not just about color, now it's more about vision, but it's still about this, this notion of trying to make sense of the world. So essentially what we have to do is, um, we have to help and navigate through the world and find the cat and maybe let's just look around for a second and try to soak in this this really looks like a um sort of like a watercolor world which i think is really beautiful and as you can see there's a lot of pieces missing But what happens is um, when you walk around, you actually get to, um, basically she she can only make sense of this through touching. So the visuals are just for the player and for it's just um, a way of actually feeling where things are and what they are made of. So the more that you walk around, the more you or maybe or just she in a, in a way can actually see. And one convention that this game also defies is um, you can't run, you can just walk because it really wouldn't make any sense otherwise you'd probably just bump into things. I think it puts a really beautiful perspective on exploration because really you can't see anything so you don't know where you have to walk. And I think these these brush strokes sort of signify the world being painted as you go along. Um, probably I I would assume that there might be a um, that there might just be an achievement for that. But I think beyond that, there's probably no sense to um, like make everything visible unless you're really keen on exploring and things. In the, the, I find it like a very interesting mechanic to actually paint the world in a way.
Nani? I think that um, things that give off sound are sort of visible even before you get close to them. Is that a bird? Oh yeah. Yes, yeah, she really does. Um, I don't actually know that much about um, blindness, uh, but there, there probably is a sort of way to, um, at least on familiar routes, that you can um, memorize where things are and then um, it just gets easier for the people to navigate the spaces without um, having to look at where there's like um, I don't know, stones, trees, and that kind of thing. And I think the, the more often you do, um, your muscle memory just sort of stores your movement at some way it becomes predictable. And I believe there's, there's also certain people, uh, certain blind people who can actually use something uh, similar to echolocation, where they can make sense of their surrounding by um, making clicking noises. And it helps them to actually perceive things even in the distance. I mean, here, here, obviously, it's um, it's limited to um, hearing things and touching things in order for her to see. Yeah, it really is like she's she's painting things in your mind, and in a way you're you're actually helping her do these things. I mean, given that she hasn't been blind all her life, she probably has a rough understanding of how things look, like in connection to to the things that she can now feel or hear.
Where's the gate? Did it just disappear? Oh no, there it is. Okay, yeah, I guess you're right. I think she, she's also very much imagining things. Don't fall. Oh, that's a bridge and that's water. Okay, now that's interesting. So first she thought this was a well, and it just turns out to be gutter. What's that weird animation there? Does it does it turn back into a well if I walk too far away? No, it doesn't look like it. I really wonder if you can actually hear clothing in the wind. <laughs> okay, now that is very gloomy.
change of color and music really changed the mood even though there is nothing that looks scary that's that's very true i mean f for you um as the player you can just see that there's a few crows and that might just not be all that scary um but for her it was like she thought there was just like some clothing hanging on a line um and then as she gets closer she actually realizes no this is a scarecrow and then there's these scary birds and it sort of changes her understanding of the world I guess that what makes it scary for her because she just couldn't make any sense of that before Ooh, sheep. I guess some of the sounds really are just a way of actually guiding you because you can't see anything so it helps to have some some sort of visualized sound on there to give you a rough idea of where you can go are those more crows No, this time it was just chickens. <laughs> Are they gonna run away now? <laughs> Maybe I can chase them out. Oh, I actually can do that. I wonder if that might be helpful in some way. Okay, now it just went from happy music to very scary music within a few seconds. Oh, okay, I see.
<laughs> yeah, I, I don't really understand how, how difficult this is to code, but, but I can totally see that um, trying to take into account the, the randomness of the player moving around must really make it difficult to actually get this to look good. She doesn't even want to get close. Oh, okay. This almost looks like I'm I'm gonna fall off the bridge into the river. Oh, that's where the chicken were. It's, it's sometimes very hard to tell where you are because you can't see very far. Okay, I think that looks like I can't actually reach the cow. Sad. Wanted to pet the cow. Oh, I was just gonna say it's very hard to to actually tell where you have to go when there's no proper uh, visual cues to guide you into the right way, and then that happened. I guess I'm on the right track.
sounds like scary music again. I guess I'm on... If that's a church bell or something, I'm, I'm probably on a graveyard or something. Okay, that's street. Y you, you can barely hear um, cars, I think. It's, it's probably just, it's completely foggy for her because it's just too much noise. Oh, well, that's cool. <laughs> Still kind of scary. I can't see anything. <laughs> I really feel like this this game doesn't have any bad endings or fail states or death in it. I think they would have probably just caused some sort of shit storm because you can get a little girl run over by a car. I think this is just not the right game for that kind of thing. Makes you wonder whether she's really following the cat or if she's just going on an adventure on her own. Is that supposed to be a map? that car crash? Oh, okay, that wasn't a car. <laughs> these, these scenes are so weird where where it changes from, from the assumed object to the actual object. I really feel like this game is sort of trying to mix the two perceptions, the, the perception that the character can have and it tries to play with 
what your perception is and still tricks you into thinking certain things. But that dog is probably real. Okay, I can't get past there. their way in. It's really weird, I don't really understand what the detour was for, but I guess you gotta put some events in there at some point. So I guess the dog wasn't even barking at me. Okay, that's, yeah, that's actually a very good explanation for that. Like, trying to avoid danger that you can't see. Yeah, I guess that makes much sense. Should have just brought some treats.
I'm there. Is this, is this supposed to be English? Sounds so weird. I'm there. That way. That way. Okay, I guess this is not the right way then. Do I need to climb the fence or something? That is strange. I wonder if there's any way to get around any of the two dogs because it doesn't look like she can climb a fence even though that one fence looks a little different than the others So that path is definitely blocked off. I'm 
I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. Yeah, I, I actually just tried that and um, I'm there. there doesn't seem to be any option. Maybe there is a way around the other dog or something. So I actually had to walk this far. It's crazy. Probably just gonna be locked off again. I think I'm gonna try here first. Oh no, there's no fence. See you around. Thank you for being here. It's kind of awkward though that I actually have to backtrack all the way now. Sometimes the, the game feels very clunky when, when you get too close to objects and uh, I can't really tell whether this just has to do with the hitboxes or whether they actually wanted it to be this way. Probably makes sense for it to be this way because if, if you're blind you gotta be careful when you walk. But it still feels, feels um, a little counterintuitive.
No! Don't tell me I have to run now. <laughs> it, yeah, I mean, in, in terms of feeling lost and being unsure of things, I guess it totally makes sense. It's just, um, I don't know, at least for me as a player, it, it sometimes feels awkward. Like I had to walk around so far away, like just to find an opening in the, in the fence. It felt kind of weird. At least to, to me, it was a little, um, little off putting in a way because and it, it kills the immersion a little bit. Yeah, I, I was just wondering, like, um, I, I tried to turn the camera around and I wanted to push forward because that's backward, but I actually still had to push backwards on the stick to walk into that direction, which was super weird. Um, yeah, I, I, I guess it's, it's a mixture of it's actually not that far away and I'm slow just feels a little tedious sometimes I think but I guess then then again on the narrative level I guess this totally works out uh, yeah Pacing is really a thing that I also find very weird. Um, I mean, they really try to spice it up with these these tiny events where where it goes from um, I don't know happy music or whatever and um, wonderful beautiful scenes to all these these scary events where you can't really tell whether this is actually what you see or whether this is something different. Um, but it is very slow paced. But then again, these these um, the the paintings, the the painted scenes. I think they they make up make up for it because it sort of gives you an insight in um, what the little girl maybe takes away from the adventure, like the the positive bits.
I think that was still just her imagination. I'm I'm not entirely sure if that actually is the cat. <laughs> <laughs> For all I know is we, we walked over a street, so maybe something happened to the cat, and yeah, that would be very sad. <laughs> but then would turn this 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 beautiful painting of a game into a very gut wrenching adventure. If you, if you just turned out at the end of the game that the cat just got hit by a car and that's it. <laughs> I think that's about as, about as anticlimactic as, as taking out like your, your CPU in near Automata and the game just ends. I mean, I was, um, when, when the, the first time when, when I played Nier Automata and I saw that I can just remove all my chips, I, I was really super curious just to see what happens. And then all of a sudden, the game ends, credits run, and that's it. Why the hell are there seagulls? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I had the same experience. I just didn't know what to do with these things. Okay, as we're almost at the end of the game lab, um, I guess we can... I guess we can... Um, wrap it up here um what, what did you think of the game maybe in um maybe in comparison to um hugh um do you have like a preference uh, for one of the two do you think that one realizes the other thing better than the other um to me i think um this game has, um, I mean, it does have a similar approach to you as you sort of have to make sense of your world and it has to do with some sort of vision. But here I think the, the aspect is more um, adding to the world, whereas in Hue it's kind of this mixture of getting all the ingredients and then playing around with them in, in the sense of subtracting again from the world, uh, subtracting again from the world in order um, to get through the game. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's true. Um, I mean, in in a way, you could argue that the main game mechanic maybe is um, painting the world as you go. But then again, it's it's maybe not that impactful as in Hue because it's just a means of conveying a narrative. As a game, I think Hue is better as a piece of art. This is better art. It's less about fun, I think, and more about conveying feelings and tell a story. Yeah, that's that's very true. At least um, Hue at least provides you with quite a few game mechanics. So there there is much more, at least for the aspect of puzzling. And here it's really just about conveying an aesthetic experience, I guess. Then again, I think in um, whether you take Hue or whether you take this game, I think that um, these games are very good examples of um, showcasing how games can be art. And it doesn't just have to do with them um, being as, 
artistically pleasing on on a visual level um, you've also got a narrative to take care of you've got sound design to take care of um, you need to pl place the objects in the right places to convey just what um, n what ideas you want to convey in the game and I think that in itself takes quite a lot of deliberation and I think this this is actually what what makes games on um, on a subterranean level quite sophisticated it's just maybe that um, people just take games at face value in, in terms of them being some some leisure time activity and then games like these just fall under the table because they're just rejected outright from the beginning Uh, yes, that's that's very much true. It, it very is um, an artistic interpretation of blindness. It's um, I, I would almost say that that blindness in this game is actually a sort of the light motif, and uh, the game designers um, try to translate it into individual elements. So from visual visual elements to sound elements, um, in in a way maybe also the game mechanics because they are so clunky and the uh, and the pacing is so so um, slow and things like that. So it really is. It's almost like you're taking one element and then you try to think of how can I turn this one element into a game. And I mean, there's, there's always room for improvement, but I think in in general, I think it works well in conveying just this one element. Okay, I think I've brought across the point about art pretty well by showcasing these two games. There are probably a lot more games that you can sort of put into this category of games as art and uh, there's there's always a lot of room for discussion um, where you see the artistry in a game. Some people might maybe just not like these games and others might like them and there's, there's so many examples you could probably take into consideration. Um, but I think as a way of showcasing what we as tutors uh, for the Klagenfurt um, Game Lab actually do is quite interesting and if there's maybe people um, among the, the people in chat that might want to consider also studying this kind of thing like you know understanding games from a game studies perspective as well as an, from an engineering perspective so cultural studies as well as the technical aspects um, we, we're still open and you you can uh, actually join us if you want to. I'll just leave a um, link in the chat so you can take a look at the program that we have and uh, maybe consider then also joining us and then we can also hopefully at some point again do these game labs uh, in a physical environment which is even much more engaging when people get together in a room, uh, play the games and also discuss them in the end. And with that, I'll thank you for being here. Thank you for the discussion. Thank you for joining. And um, next Tuesday, there will be another game lab. And the next one will be on, um, it will actually be a coding game lab this time. We didn't have that. Um, last month it will be an introduction to uh, shader programming in unity so hands on programming so hopefully we'll, we'll see some of you um, next Tuesday for some uh, unity programming I'm sure that will also be very exciting to show the the technical side of what we also do here and the things you can do with engines. So I'm very much looking forward to that. So in that sense, um, see you again next Tuesday.